Nikon P900, Nikon P1000. Worth the price point? We're gonna get into that and find out. Hello and welcome to On The Patio with Mr. D. Hey, today we're going to talk about a comparison and a uh, operational testing of the new P1000 versus the old P900. So what's the big whoop-de-whoop -whoop on this thing? Uh, the biggest thing is, is that they changed the optical zoom rating out to 3000 millimeters optical zoom. But they changed a lot of other things too with this camera for me to figure out is it worth the difference in price point because right now the p900 you can get around 500 bucks right now and the p1000 here is almost a thousand dollars so it's two for one kind of thing it's like a bogo so what i did is i did two field tests one i took out a side-by-side -side comparison shoot uh, with the p900 and the p1000 out at a place called uh, Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive here in Florida. And what I wanted to do was to check out the image quality and video quality. Now, the image quality, the sensors are identical. There is no difference. So what's the big whoop? The big whoop here is the optics to make the imagery a lot clearer. And they also upgraded the video from 1080p in the P900 to 4K at 30 and 25 frames per second in the P1000. So there's a big deal. Also, another thing that the uh, P900 couldn't do, you couldn't use any filters on it, no lens hoods, because it would cause all kinds of lens diffraction and all kinds of problems in your imagery. Uh, Nikon then took that on, and in the P1000, they added a lens hood that comes with it now, a butterfly lens hood, and also the ability to add your 77 millimeter filter systems on your lens filter. Now I use a 77 uh, millimeter variable ND. I use that a lot when I'm out on my adventures, uh, non-kayaking adventures, when I'm shooting waterfalls or streams or something like that and I wanna do some creative uh, photography, I use that ND filter for that. Now I couldn't use that system using the P900. Not to say that that P900 isn't a great camera, because it is. I've had it for almost two years now. I always enjoyed using the P900 on my kayak because one, it's a bridge camera. Two, the cost point is if something drastic happens and it gets in the water, um, I'm not out four or five thousand dollars in a DSLR setup. Now, yes, I did used to use the DSLR setups all the time. I used 600 millimeter lenses and all that kind of crazy stuff. But when you start adding that up and you're in a water environment, mm, mm, mm. yes, I did lose one. Uh, I flipped the kayak over, the camera went in the water, it was done, it was toast. So lessons learned. So that's why I went to bridge cameras and start looking at bridge cameras and then finally settled on the P900 at the time because the P1000 wasn't even out yet. But the P900 had some problems. One of the big problem is the location of the tripod mount. It is on the left hand side of the camera with the weight. It was breaking out the mount system here. Uh, so you had to buy a lens support ring. Not a big deal. I did it. It works great. It still works great. There's nothing wrong with this camera. Absolutely nothing. But I wanted a little bit more. So I researched into the new Nikon P1000 and what's all the whoop de do on it. Uh, there was a lot of new improvements and a few of them really blew me away. One of the thing was there was no focus ring on the P900. Now you can do final, uh, finite focusing on it, or you can use it for what I use it for, is an exposure compensator ring. Now, when you're shooting wildlife and nature and landscape and all that kind of photography stuff, 
the contrast and lighting changes constantly. And shooting in a manual setting is a nightmare, trying to get this thing to set up right and take one shot and, and the whole environment changes and you gotta do it again. Uh, with the uh, exposure compensator ring, I've been using that, I used it in the second field test where I used it a lot. And we're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. But right there was, the, was a big improvement. The other one was this thing reaches out to 3,000 millimeter optical zoom, and it does a great job. You have to change the clarity rating in post-production if you're out at the max optical zoom length. Uh, but it'll just, because all those images are soft, and in post-production you just gotta do a little tweaking, and it brings them right up, and it's just strictly awesome. And like I said earlier, I did two field tests. One where I did a comparison of the two units out at Lake Apaco Wildlife Drive. And the second one, I went to a town called Celebration. It's kind of like a town within a town. And there I took only the uh, P1000 for photography use. Now I took my Osmo Pocket to do some of the video work uh, when I was doing the narrations. But other than that, that whole segment was shot with the P1000. And I'll tell you what, I learned a lot about what Nikon did in the insides of this camera to make it an exceptional camera. One of the things that we're all told, you never use auto, you never use those pre-programmed uh, things in the mode button, and we either use manual setting or we use uh, aperture priority or shutter priority. Those are the three. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, with this particular camera, you don't need to do that. Put this bad boy on full auto, and it does an exceptional job setting up the shot. Now, having the exposure compensator right here does take out some or add to uh, what you want on your shot by making that adjustment. You can see it in the viewfinder uh, or on screen, and it's really, really excellent. Uh, the macro end of this is about the same as the P900, but again, you can really do some really, really nice photography in the macro uh, mode and in the autofocus mode is really outstanding. When I was doing the opening monologue for the field test at Celebration, I was using the P1000 in its video mode and also the audio. Now, as everybody knows, audio in a built-in camera, regardless of what the heck it is, they're not really that good. And the same thing holds true here. I mean, it's not trashable, but it's not that great. And it picks up a lot of wind noise and stuff like that. So you really can't beat a digital recorder with a lapel mic. Can't beat that all day long. That's the way I go. Um, the other thing this had, Nikon finally got smart and moved the quarter 20 mount to the center not off to the left like the other one, taking care of that breakout problem because this is heavy. Trust me, this camera weighs a ton. One of the things I wanted to do out on this field test was to get away from the traditional manual setting and the aperture priority and the shutter priority modes and look at these modes that they built into the camera itself. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this thing blew me away. Uh, I put it on auto mode, not expecting a lot, but that's not what they gave me. This thing produces some great, great imagery. Again, you'll see that in field test too. One of the things also I did is I played around with some of the other mode dials. One of them was the um, bird watching one. Now, when I'm out kayaking and stuff like that, I do a lot of uh, wildlife shooting and it's a long way off because you spook them as you get up close to them they'll fly away or swim away in a gator case, they go down. Uh, so you've got to have some pretty good distance between you and your subject. And this is where that 3,000 millimeter optical zoom comes into play. But I was having some difficulty out there at Celebration uh, trying to get the thing to track and focus right. So I clicked over to this bird mode just, just on the hunch that it might be something kind of special. And what it did, it takes the um, focus metering section that you have programmed into your camera and sets it 
directly into spot metering. Now you'll see up here in this real uh, quick picture, the distance I had between this one shot and bring it up 3,000 millimeters. And trust me, uh, that's the only way to shoot bird life. Now, again, this camera does not track in flight well, if at all. Now, yeah, you can put it into a high-speed shutter system and you might get one or two, but it's gonna be blurry. It's, it's gonna be making changes and you really don't have enough time when you're in a kayak and, and uh, to set up the manual shot and then get a bird tracking correctly in a manual mode. You just, you just don't have enough time. And this camera is not built for that. Uh, the other mode was scene. Scene was interesting. Scene, what you do is you kick over to scene mode and then you have to pop your, uh, your flash attachment up. And what it does is it, it reads the background, uh, lighting, uh, contrasts, and all that kind of stuff, and tells the camera if a flash is required or not. Again, you'll see some examples in Field Test 2 out of Celebration where I use that and talk about that. Now, one of the things I did notice, this thing is a beast. It weighs a lot, but its performance definitely outshines the size difference. Now, you look at the P900 here and the P1000, there is a huge difference in size. Now, would I recommend that you go out and uh, buy the P1000 if you already own the P900? My answer is no, don't do it. Your P900 uh, does exceptionally well unless you want to have uh, 4K at uh, 30 frames a second in your video quality and or you want to uh, reach out that additional 3000 millimeter optical zoom. That is what you get with this, but you also get a lot more. Well, hey guys, we are out here getting ready to do our field test of this beast, the P1000 from Nikon. And I'm comparing it against my uh, current P900. Now, I've had this camera about, I don't know, 20 months, something like that now. Um, and I heard about the uh, P1000 reaching out a different, uh, another thousand millimeters and getting and adding HD to it and all that kind of thing. So what I wanted to do was to do a side-by-side -side comparison. First of all, to find out, is it worth to make the jump from the P900 to the P1000. So what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna do kind of a, a shoot around here of different things. We got a beautiful bird sitting right there. And I'm gonna fire that camera up and fire this camera up. Okay, I'm gonna set the first shot up at 275 millimeters. Okay, we're ready to go there. Okay, we are ready to go there. And we are ready to go here. I'm gonna fire them both. Now what I had to do was I had to change from spot or from uh, area metering and it's kind of tracking. And I had to change it to spot metering so I could get the focus dead on that bird. The one thing that I've noticed is different on this particular uh, camera here. This gives you the actual distance up in the top corner. Like that one said 275 uh, millimeters. This one doesn't, it just gives you the bar. So there's an improvement right there. Our subject has now gone up in a tree. Hard to see up there. So the first thing you find out here, guys, is that this camera here has a new added digital distance reading where its younger brother, the P900, didn't. So the P1000 already is showing some great improvement here. So, hey, we'll be back in a bit.
Well, guys, hey, we are down here now at the pump house. And again, this is the Lake Apopka Wildlife Drive. And I was doing some testing here with the P900 at uh, 24 millimeters and the uh, P1000 at 24 uh, millimeters. Getting an idea of um, what the differences are for like landscape shots and stuff like that. And what I did find out already, they made some changes. There was no focus ring or anything like that on the uh, P900. However, there is one on the P1000 and you can set up that focus ring to be a compensator. I've used this thing already four or five times this morning and I gotta tell you straight up what an addition that is uh, because when you're shooting wildlife you're in all kinds of different environments where it's dark and the contrasts are all kinds of wiggy and messed up all over the place. So having the compensator ring right there when I'm looking through I can go ahead and set the compensator using the focus ring to uh, get the shot that I'm looking for and get the uh, contrast I'm looking for. So right there is a great, great improvement on the P1000. So uh, we're gonna be testing videos. And uh, again, this shoots 1080p, the P900. This now shoots uh, 4K on the P1000 at 25 and 30. Um, I haven't seen any of the footage yet. Uh, I did one where a gator was floating around. Uh, I did some shots, comparison uh, standard stills using uh, maxed out at 3,000, maxed out at 2,000, did it at this site here. In fact, that gator is sitting right there in the water, the one I was shooting a minute ago. And I want to see what the difference is when I get it back into post and see what's going on. So, hey, we'll be back in a little bit. Hey guys, we are out here today in a place called Celebration. It's kind of like a town within a town. Really, really a cool place to do photography work. And today we're going to be doing the on-site field test for the Nikon P1000. Now, the video I'm shooting right now is from the P1000. So anyway, what we're going to do today is we are going to go around the park here, get us some uh, stills and some video shots and stuff like that and see how this P1000 performs over my previous P900. So, hey guys, we'll see you out there. We'll get back in a bit. Well, hey guys, we are wrapping up the uh, field test on the functionality of the uh, Nikon P1000. Now, I've got to tell you, I was really blown away surprised. Now, again, I don't know what the image quality is going to look like. I'll look at that in post, but right now, I'm kind of blown away because what I did different, normally I shoot manual or if I'm in my ca kayak, I'm shooting aperture priority. Today, I wanted to test out these mode buttons or on the mode dial, like scene, bird watching. Uh, I didn't do moon uh, because it's no moon out, it's bright outside. But I did those two and I found out if I go into bird watching, it changes the focus to spot metering and it really did well because I was having a difficult time getting some bird shots using my standard way of doing it, which is called tracking uh, I was using the tracking focus system I said well let me see what this bird watch thing is all about and I see what it did it went to spot metering and it just nailed these look at these photos you'll see what I'm talking about Well, hey guys, we've been walking around here in celebration and uh, been checking out this, uh, the P1000, as you can see it here. And what I'm finding out is that this particular camera, <laughs> believe it or not, you put it on the auto button and it performs remarkably. Now, I'm used to shooting in manual or when I'm in my kayak, I'm shooting um, 
aperture priority but I'm thinking that this camera would really really do well shooting in the auto mode but hey still doing some testing here I've done a lot of landscape shots here on the first segment Uh, started to get some zoom shots in and uh, we'll continue on so we'll be back in a bit now the other one was seen Scene requires you to pop up your flash and what it does is it meters the lighting around your subject and your backlight and all this kind of stuff like that and if it needs to be enhanced once you hit the shutter button it will read how much light is in there and it'll fire the uh, flash attachment or it won't fire the flash attachment you'll see a couple of examples in here. Um, the zoom quality, I'll tell you what, I was kind of blown away uh, using the video part of this thing where I wanted to see how much lag there was to catch up on the focus as you're zooming in and out. It wasn't that much lag, so that was really good. Now this is set at 4K at 30 frames a second, and this is handheld. There is no um, tripod on this, so if it gets a little shaky, my bad. Now I'm going to do a little zoom in here. The focus recovery time is not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down now and we're going to go ahead and go into post-production and see what we got because I don't know. So hey, we'll see you later on. So you can see the comparison and price point differences. Is it worth that extra four or $500 from going from the P900 to the P1000? Again, if you own the P900, I'd say no. My sister scored on this particular deal because she's the uh, co-executive producer of Paddling Places Florida and goes on my events with me and stuff like that. So I gave her this camera, the P900, so I can go out and play with the P1000. Uh, it works out good for both of us there. She's gonna be able to improve her wildlife photography, get reach out a lot further, and uh, get the same uh, production that I did using my P900. And again, I used it a lot on a lot of Paddling Places Florida events. All the still imagery and, uh, and some videography uh, most of you know I use the Osmo Pocket now for my uh, 4K videography from the kayak because it's just so small I can maneuver that thing around and keep paddling while it's running and doing all that kind of crazy stuff. So it really works well. So the bottom line is in my eyes, yeah, the price difference, uh, if you don't have a P900, this is a good investment. It's a nice camera. It does great imagery. It does produce great videography the audio eh, eh, eh. but hey it's up to you guys i hope this information helped you out we'll see you on the next one